One of our best tools in physics for understanding the world is using data. There are two common types of this. One is numbers with or without units, and two is graphs. An example of things with units is counting, such as counting sheep. An uh, example of things with units are distances, speeds, time, just about everything, which means any time you use a number in physics, you're going to have to have units with it. Our second type of data, graphs, is often used in science. They can be used to show trends, get equations used to make predictions, and various other things. In fact, most of our labs will be using these graphs to make equations and then use those equations to predict where something's going to happen. Uh, one of these examples is when we use the launchers to launch things across the room, you're going to be graphing your data to find out where the launcher is hitting, then changing the angle and using your equation that you made for the launcher to find out where it's going to land again. Since we now know the different types of data and how it's used, we should talk about how we collect data. Uh, some important questions to consider are how do we measure and why do we use standard units? The second one is pretty obvious since our standard units help us to talk about things. If I were to tell you that I wanted to walk across the room and how far I walked, I'd need to first give you a unit that you understand. The feet that we actually use in the English American system are very inaccurate or they used to be when they first started. They were based on the king's foot. Uh, which changed every time you had a new king, which is horrible. When we want to measure something, there's a couple different things we might want to measure. Speed, volume, distance, and various other things. To do this, we can use tools such as meters, a meter stick. Uh, meter sticks help us to measure distance, and they measure in, you guessed it, meters. These have standard units. We most commonly measure distances in meters. Meters are a part of a bigger system, the SI system. The SI system actually stems from a French term, Sistema International. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right, but you understand. It's an international system of units. Almost all of the world uses this. Only America and maybe two other small countries use our English system. This is a system with base units, meters, liters, seconds, and grams. It then uses prefixes to make smaller and larger units. These prefixes are kilo, hecto, deca, the base, which is a grams, meters, liters, etc., deca, centa, and milla. You will have to memorize those, and in order to do that, we have a nice little acronym. King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. It's probably not true, but it'll help you remember it. King is kilo, Henry is hecto, deca is died, by is the base, drinking is deca, chocolate is centa, and milk is miller. Notice that deca and deca are very similar. One has an I, one has an A. Uh, these all correspond to numbers which are right in front of you. So if you had kilometers, you'd have 1,000 meters. If you had deca grams, you'd have 10 grams. If you had centiliters, you'd have 0 0.01 liters, so less than one liter. We're going to use this to convert. 